All right, we've got a sports card show to go to. I don't want to take you with me. Last weekend, uh, I went to a sports card show, uh, one of the first in my area uh, this year. Uh, there was one that I went to, um, I, if you caught me on a couple of lives with, of course, uh, Nate and Anthony, uh, talk about a show that I'd gone to sometime last year, so a few months ago. But this is the first one of this year. Most of the ones in my area have either been canceled or postponed because of, you know, the world global thing. So uh, I'm going to take you with me. Now, uh, it's going to have to be a voiceover again. I figured out how to get my microphone to work, but... There was just a lot of loud uh, commotion and, and just a lot going on that um, it kind of, I don't know, just kind of took away from the atmosphere as well as I brought the wrong camera mount. So um, a lot of the footage I took, uh, I was trying to hold the camera and it just, you know, it, it wasn't really good. So I actually had to kind of condense it down because I didn't, didn't want to show you me showing you the floor of the place as well as the ceiling. So uh, I'll do a little voice over here. And at the end, I'll show you one, what I picked up, and two, um, I'm going to give you some tips about, uh, well, I don't want to call it tips, but it's tips based upon my experience going to sports card show. So with that, let's get into the video and come along with me to the show. All right, here we are. Uh, we're at the Hickory, North Carolina Convention Center. Uh, this is the line to get in. I thought this was going to be one of those, you know, only a few people in. But the story was that they were just uh, late getting the show open, and so uh, there were no restrictions, and we walked right in. It was split up uh, to two parts. On the right-hand side, this is what I'm showing you first. Uh, this was uh, essentially the toy side. There was all kinds of toys. Uh, there were some sports cards in here. Um, I did f uh, buy a few cards from around here, and something else I'll show you uh, that I picked up. But we're going to move over here to the sports card side. All right, so now we're on the sports card side. Um, and uh, as you can see there, yes, that is the enforcer Arn Anderson is there. Uh, there's a better picture of him coming up soon. It's just to kind of give you an idea of uh, what the show look like on the sports card side. And uh, I'm going to move around here uh, to the left side here in just a moment. Um, along here, uh, you'll see just uh, different ways. And again, I'm sorry about, you know, the shaky camera. I forgot the right uh, holder, but uh, guys had bins up and, of course, the display cases, uh, things like that. Uh, some of the, uh, a lot of vintage stuff at this show. Uh, there was some modern, but mostly, I would say, a good portion of the stuff was a lot of vintage stuff. And when I mean vintage, I mean, like, pre-80s, um, you know, the more modern stuff it is kind of like for me it's like you know the late 90s and into that area so just kind of show you uh, uh you know the first side here and here in just one moment i'm gonna stand right next to where that gentleman just walked in the door kind of give you a better shot of uh kind of the show so uh, it's a really large room so again um just a just a plethora of stuff uh vintage stuff uh modern stuff uh, sealed product. Uh, I found the sealed product to be very, very overpriced uh, at this show. Uh, one, just kind of give you an example. The uh, average price for a Hoops Blaster box was about $130. So um, no go on the sealed product for me. Uh, again, you see this a lot, a lot of just bins of people and they got different uh, prices on them. You know, one will have a $1 price or a $5 price. Also there on the right, you'll see um, that a lot, just guys sitting in front of boxes, uh, and just digging through it. That guy actually, those were all graded cards. So, uh, but then here in just one second, you'll see these guys, these are all just single cards. Uh, I don't like buying from those bins because a lot of times the cards are like damaged and scratched. So here you'll see a lot of sealed products coming up. Uh, this guy right here, um, I'm gonna, I had a conversation with him. I was going to try to buy some of those hoops packs right there. Except he wanted $34 a pack, so I moved on right quickly. So um, I was going to try to get a bulk deal on him, but he, again, he wanted way too much. He wanted like $500 for everyone. Um, so, again, just uh, here's another way. Guys just set cards out like this. Uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, but just kind of the uh, person inside me says that I would not set cards out like that because I would just be too afraid of people picking up cards and walking off if you got a large crowd around so um 
that's it. I'm just going to kind of keep walking around here. Uh, show you all kinds of different stuff. Uh, this guy here, I believe, I remember he had just a lot of sports magazines and stuff like that. He did have some cards, but mostly a lot of it was uh, sports magazines and, you know, SIs and, um, you know, Sports Illustrated. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, sporting News and stuff like that. So, uh, let's see. Again, more sealed product. Again, guys, they're just a lot of just way overpriced for sealed product. A lot of that stuff is retail boxes. I'm sure they probably the guys that show up at seven in the morning to the WalMarts and Targets and buy all this stuff up. Something real cool coming up right here on the right is Nikita Koloff. Uh, he was a professional wrestler uh, way before my time. Uh, but uh, talking with Anthony up at Pittsburgh, he's now known as Pastor Koloff. So that's kind of really cool. So he was there signing autographs. Um, I did not uh, get in line or sign for any autographs. Um, I, I'm sorry. I, I just uh, I'm the type of person that like I don't want to pay for autographs. If I want to get an if I want an autograph, I'd much rather just ask somebody for it. Uh, but these guys were charging for autographs. Um, quickly moved past those 88 Don Russ. Not really much. There was I think that's a 92 Upper Deck basketball. Just uh, again, uh, just was trying to show you kind of the different stuff I had. That woman in the wheelchair is re uh, something really cool. I, can't, I don't know if I caught it there. She's got a steel chair, and apparently she takes it around to all the shows with the wrestlers and has all the wrestlers sign it. Um, coming up again. Sorry for the shaky cam. This uh, a person here had a bunch of wrestling memorabilia and posters and stuff like that. But that right there is Heath Slater. He uh, was a professional, current professional wrestler, I believe for, uh, I think it's AEW right now. And these people are in line to see the enforcer, Arn Anderson. I'm going to flip around here and get you a better picture of him right there. Okay, so that was the show again. Sorry, I didn't get much footage uh, or I didn't get much usable footage, we'll say, because I forgot to bring the right mount. I, I brought a backpack and I brought a shoulder mount. Um, for my right shoulder, but my backpack is a you know single strap and it would bend on the same shoulder And it was just kind of too clumsy to, to kind of switch around or anything like that So I tried to just kind of hold it around and then uh, you know I'm still still getting used to like filming people in public and and, and stuff like that But I, as more shows come up, um, I'll carry I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll switch my uh, camera mount to my left side um, I could have done it in the parking lot, but it was cold. And uh, anyways, this long story, I apologize for the uh, footage and uh, not all that great footage. But what I'm going to show you now is what I picked up. Uh, so one of the things I picked up is I picked up this gold, uh, pri or gold, pink prism, uh, Talon Horton Tucker. Um, just uh, he won. It's a Laker and two. Um, I couldn't pass up the price. Uh, the guy was asking 12 bucks. Um, and then I did kind of get him down to eight. And then kind of realized later uh, why he did uh, select uh, go with eight. I don't know. Let's see if I can get the, but there is a print uh, defect right across there. You can kind of see it. Um, I didn't, you know, didn't catch that be because I was more of a, a pink uh, pulser, you know, Kalen Hort Tucker as a Laker. I was kind of more focused on that. And I'll get to that here in a little bit when we talk about tips. Um, the next uh, couple of things I picked up, uh, I got these out of kind of one of those, you see those boxes, uh, except I like to go through the ones where the guys have them sleeved. Um, so uh, what I picked up from one vendor is I got a couple of tacos from, from uh, the uh, his NBA debut from Mosaic. Um, I picked up a Kevin Porter Jr., um, then I picked up, of course, a Josh Jacobs for the PC. I don't have the green. I have got, you know, just the base. And then I also did find the orange one as well. And then I got this cool uh, Topps Chrome, the uh, refractor of Walker Bueller. So, of course, you guys know that goes to the PC. Got the fireworks Josh Jacob. I actually think I actually have this one, but uh, I think I needed to, to add it in uh, to make the count come out so I could get a, a good deal. Um, I got a red, white, and blue Mookie, all right, as well as a Topps Chrome uh, of Mookie as well. I didn't have either one of those. You guys know I'm a big Coos fan, so of course I got the Coos. So for all of those, I paid, uh, I believe I paid 12 bucks for all, all of those. Now, was that a good price? I, I don't, you know, it was a price I was willing to uh, pay for that. Uh, the next couple things I picked up, uh, I picked up a uh, Co Cody Bellinger. Uh, this is from 2017 Heritage. Paid 50 cents for this. 
Of course, that goes to the PC. Then I got this, of course, this uh, 2017 Mike Piazza uh, Bowman Prism. Uh, well, I, I don't think Bowman calls them Prism. I think they called them uh, something different. But again, uh, Mike Piazza uh, was kind of one of my favorite Dodgers growing up. So um, I got that paid 50 cents uh, a piece for those. So I got both of those for a buck. And then these two, um, these were actually gifts from uh, somebody that went with me. Oh, over here, sorry, Blaine Sports Cards went with me. Um, he found these. He knows that I am a big Corey Seager fan, so uh, I'm not sure what he paid for this or what don't really matter because, of course, he gifted it to me, so that'll go up into the PC. And then he found a pink taco because I guess he saw me buy those other tacos uh, false, so uh, he found this. Not really sure how much he paid for it, but again, he gifted them to me, um, so that's what we do is, is something I'll talk about here in a little bit uh as far as uh, tips about going to sports card shows is, you know, but, uh, you know, kind of things you find uh, people, you know, what they like to collect. So you see it, you pick it up, uh, you buy it for them and you gift it to them. And of course that comes back. I picked up something else cool. Um, let me get it out for you and show it to you. So for me, for me, it's a pickup of the day. I got me a Raider jersey, a Fred uh, Belichnikoff jersey. And it's not just a Fred Bolitnikoff jersey. It is autoed with the JSA seal on it with the certificate of authenticity. So uh, I'm extremely happy with this pickup, with this purchase um, because of the price that I paid for it. Um, I didn't really have to haggle with the guy too much. Just kind of asked him, hey, you know, what's the deal with that? And he's like, and he, just is kind of like you got it in a kind of a bulk deal with a bunch of other stuff that he got. I actually got that, as you saw from the video. There was a, a one side with toys and one side with sports cards. Now, there was some sports cards on the toy side. It looked like there were kind of people with, you know, dual vendors, but they had more toys than sports cards. And this was the deal with that guy. He had uh, more toys. Um, he actually had uh, money as well, like coins and paper monies and old uh, what do you, what's that called? A uh, frem, a frem, a frem, a fremia, a fremia. You know the paper stuff. Anyways, so he had a lot of that type of stuff. So he got it kind of in a bulk deal. Um, so we kind of haggled just a little bit, not much. I, I will you know, say that I paid less than fifty dollars for it. So um, I'm pretty sure that um, the main thing I do have to check, and the reason I did say it uh, kind of didn't pay what he asked for it was, you know, I got. I didn't have the opportunity to look up this number because this number here, I believe, and somebody down in the comments, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can go look this up on JSA to make sure this number matches your product of the one that you have. So I do have to uh, check that. I have not done that yet because I wanted to wait and show it to you guys. So, uh, uh, but I'm pretty confident that that is a, you know, you know, a genuine autograph. So, uh, with that, I'm going to move into talking about some tips uh, and experience, experiences that I have from going to shows, and maybe you can learn a little something from it. All right, so if you've never been to a sports card show before, I highly recommend uh, checking out, you know, of course, my video of all the show I went to and other shows that I will be going to and getting uh, hopefully better footage than what I showed you here. And uh, what it is, essentially, it's uh, a lot of it is, is uh, shops, um, private vendors and things like that, that that's what they do to make their living. They, they uh, you know, go and set up at shows or they have a shop and, you know, on the weekends, maybe they close their shop and come to a show. Um, and you could see, you know, it's not just local people. I think uh, one of the uh, bigger boost there. Uh, I believe it was uh, it was called uh, Empire Sports Cards, and I think they were based out of uh, the New York City. Um, so again, it, it's uh, it could a lot of it is that. Also, too, there are private individuals, people like you and me, who just have you know cards and want to set up. And the there's usually some type of uh, you know price to uh, purchase a table or purchase to set up. And then, of course, you have to uh, pay for it and have that all set up before the show. Um, con you know, a lot of times when you look up shows, you can find the contact information of the promoter or the producer of the show. And a lot of times they'll have, uh, you know, the price of the tables and things like that. It's something that I might be looking into doing in the future if I, you know, 
can ever get through all this stuff and know exactly what I have. And so, uh, again, it's just, I don't know, a lot of uh, different things. You got, so there's uh, graded cards, there's raw cards, um, you know, there's sealed products, you know, and, and the, the types just range from all different types. There was one entire booth there dedicated to non uh, sports cards, more of a kind of what I guess you would call that movie TV show. Uh, they had graded cards and raw cards and packs of cards from, you know, uh, anything from Three's Company to Twilight to, you know, The Walking Dead, um, all that stuff. Um, you guys saw the booth that had uh, wrestling memorabilia and, you know, uh, things like that. So you, just about any type of sport or collectible, you know, uh, card you could probably find at a card show. For shows in your area, um, I've found that there's not just one website that has all of them. Beckett sometimes has the card shows listed on, but they don't have all of them. There's other websites that list other other ones. I know the two promotion companies in my area, and so I check their websites pretty regularly. And so just a simple search of you know sports card shows in my area might come up with a few different websites. So uh, that is one of the best ways to find sports card shows in your area. Also to be aware, uh, most of them do charge some type of a mission. Um, we, uh, for the show that I went to, uh, had to pay $5 to get into the show. Um, and so just kind of know, some of them may be free, just kind of know that before you go that, you know, you might have to pay an admission and know what it is beforehand because you can account that into your budget if you're working off of a budget. All right, so one of the first tips that I will share with you, and it's from more kind of a personal experience, and it's not something that, you know, I uh, say don't do, just know that this could happen, um, but it's something that I don't do now because it kind of is annoying to me, is wearing a team hat, logo, jersey, you know, jacket or something like that. Because what will happen a lot of times is the vendors will key in on that and they will try to, of course, draw you into their booth saying, hey, I've got this from that team and I've got that from that team. And so, I mean, if you're the type that doesn't mind that type of stuff, if you're strictly going to look for, you know, your team and, and players from your teams and things like that, by all means. For me, it's just a bit of an annoyance and I just, I, I don't, I don't like it. So, um, I don't, when I go to card shows, I don't wear any kind of team hat, team logo, or anything like that. It just kind of cuts down on, you know, uh, uh, you know, people just trying to draw you into their booths for, for no apparent reason. But me personally, I don't wear a, a team hat, team logo, or anything like that. If I wear a hat, it's usually, you know, something not related to sports or anything like that. Because I just don't want to be bothered with the, that type of stuff. If you don't mind that stuff, by all means, you know, do it. But for me, it's just not what I like. I, and I'm just more sharing that for you to be aware of that. Um, that way, if you are the type of person like me who doesn't like that type of stuff, you know, you'll know to kind of prepare for that. All right, next thing we'll talk about is selling cards at sports shows. Yes, you as a, uh, I don't know, Patreon of going into the show can sell. There's no rules against it. Now, at least the shows I go to don't have any rules against that type of stuff. Be sure to check with yours because there might be, you know, some type of you know, rule against it or, or something along that line, because uh, it might vary from state to state whether, you know, people can do that. So just check with that first. Um, but if you're going to uh, sell to vendors, just know this, as you're per, uh, perusing the aisles and, and looking at the different vendor stuff, they will not ask you if you've got anything to sell. Well, most of them won't. Um, some of them will, some of them, you know, but most of them won't because they're more focused on selling. Um, so if you want to sell, you have to be a little bit aggressive and say, hey, I have these cards, you know, you know, be, you know, would you like to look at them? Uh, because they're, uh, most of them will not ask you. Now, one of the things I do is the cards that I want to sell, I carry around in this box right here. Everybody at a sports card show knows what this box is. This is a PSA box. This is when they send your cards back to you, you get them in these boxes. So the guys see me carrying this box and um, a lot of them will be prompted to say, hey, what you got in the box? Um, another reason I carry the box too is not only carry the cards that I want to sell, but also too, if I buy something, I'd like to put it in, a, in, a, uh, in this box rather than stuff it in my book bag where it could get bent or torn up. And we'll talk about buying in a little bit. But, uh, you know, if you can get your hands on a box like this, that's, you know, perfectly fine because that shows people that, hey, I've got cards and I might want to sell them. 
And if you don't have a PSA box, you can always go to your local card shop and get you one of these small boxes and put your cards in as well. Of course, if you've got graded cards, they're not going to uh, completely fit in here. Uh, but you could put like your top loaded cards or your penny sleeve cards in here um, laid down in certain ways. And of course, these come in a bunch of different sizes. Um, so if you can't find a PSA box, but I would highly recommend a PSA box because most everybody knows what a, what's in a PSA box. I, my uh, second tip about selling cards is if you're going to sell cards, um, know what you want for the card uh, when somebody asks you for it. Uh, one of the things that for me that if I were a vendor there that I would that I would dislike is that if you if you're trying to sell me this card right here and I ask you how much you want, the next thing I want would because of all the things that are going on, it's like I would like for you to tell me the price you know right away. What do you want for this card right away? The, I see this all the time. I watch other vlogs. Uh, I see it at shows. But then people immediately go, well, I don't know. And they whip out their phone and they start looking up comps and, and, and things like that. The day before you go to the show, look up your cards. Look it up. See what it is that that card or those cards are going for. And if you need to, kind of like this, and it, it's maybe put a sticker on it with your price on it that shows what you're willing to take for the card. Now, when it comes to selling cards... The vendors are not going to probably pay eBay prices because, of course, they want to buy the card to, of course, flip it and make money. So just kind of know you're not going to get top dollar. If a card goes for $100 on eBay, a vendor is not going to pay you $100. They're probably not even going to want to pay you $50. So just kind of know, you know, know that going in if you're going to try to sell to vendors. Another tip I'll tell you about selling is be aware of what's going on around you. Keep your ears open. Listen for other uh, customers or other people at the show, uh, pay attention to the other customers asking the vendors or the sellers uh, for cards. Hey, do you have this? Do you have that? Because maybe you might have what that person's looking for. And if that vendor doesn't have it, you might be able to take that person to the side and say, hey, I have this card and I'll have that card you're looking for. And you might be able to you know, show it to them. Also, too, uh, you might have it, you know, at, you didn't bring it with you. You could exchange information, say, hey, I have that card. You know, here's my, you know, you know, Facebook or my Instagram or Twitter or whatever it is. And you got, might be able to strike a deal later on. So just pay attention to what the other customers are asking the vendors for. So those are just my experience on selling cards at sports card shows and things like that. So again, that's not everything there is to know about selling sports cards. It's just kind of my experience. Now we'll go into buying cards uh, at sports card shows. Uh, the first one, I believe, for me, is the most important one. And it's with anything. Never pay the asking price or the sticker price. What I mean by that is if you ask for a, the price of a card and the vendor tells you, you know, $200 or $100 or something like that, don't pay that price. Um, those, especially at shows, they kind of hike the price up a little bit because those vendors, they have expenses to go to the shows. You know, they've got gas, hotel, food, whatever it is to get themselves to the show. And so they're going to kind of inflate their card price a little bit to try to, of course, cover some of those costs as quickly as possible. Um, I find that you get a better deal later in the day than you do earlier in the day. Um, so just kind of kind of keep that into mind too, is that maybe at the end of the day, you could hit up a vendor who is, you know, getting ready to start packing up and you'll take one let one card off of his hand for him. But we'll talk about that here next. So again, never pay the asking price or the sticker price. Negotiate. Try to get that price down. The other part of it too is that, you know, that is a time that maybe you might want to take a step back and look to see. Maybe he's trying to sell you a $100 card for $200. So uh, again, that might be the time to pull out your phone and look up the price or something like that. Um, so you know that you're not going to overpay for that card. Another tip I'll give you is try to buy in bulk. Now, uh, again, that by that I mean, you know, you'll see I, sh I showed you some footage of, you know, guys digging through boxes and, and going for, you know, looking for specific cards and things like that. You know, whether the box is a 50 cent box, a dollar box, five dollar box, however it is. Um, try to get you a stack of cards up, you know, however many, maybe, you know, 10, 15, 20, 100, however many it is. 
and know, of course, you know, that, okay, these cards are a nickel a piece, then, you know, try to, uh, you know, if you got, you know, a hundred cards, know how much that's going to be, and then try to, of course, negotiate that price down. Most vendors, when it comes to those boxes of, you know, digging through where you can pull out, you know, you know, a, a bunch of cards, more than willing to trade with you because one, they want the money, and two, they need the space to add more cards into those boxes. So, again, try to get a bulk deal. Try to to gather things up, and that's not just for those, you know, go through the box uh, type cards. Even the, you know, high end cards. If you're the type that has, you know, several hundred dollars or several thousand dollars to spend on cards. You know, try to buy two or three cards from the same vendor and get that price a little bit lower. And so you're, of course, not paying, again, the sticker price. How to bring both of those together when it comes to buying and selling. You know, the other thing is trade. Um, try to, if you're going to sell something or even buy something, try to make a trade. Like if, you know, you have a card, say, hey, would you trade this for that? Or, hey, how about I give you this card and, you know, 50 bucks or something like that. Try to, you know, use your cards that you have as value, either, you know, going to to the vendor or coming back to you. You know, same thing. You know, if you want, you know, try to trade a card for card or, you know, make the vendor, you know, give you the money, you know, on top of a card that you want. So, Try to do that. That and uh, trading is also a really good way to go to a card show and get cards without even spending any money, other than maybe the entrance price or something like that. You know, it is to you know kind of you know you don't have a whole heck of a lot of money or or you're on a budget or something like that. You know, bring cards to try to trade with uh, the vendors as well. Another tip I will throw in here as well uh, for me is at least is when I get there I don't go in and then go to the first table and spend a bunch of time there and then go to the second table and spend a bunch of time there and go to the third table. I like to kind of get a sense of what's going on that day. Um, what I usually do is I go in and I will take kind of a, a quick walk around um, uh, of the show. See what's going on. See what's what. You know, see who has what. See who's got the sealed product. Who's got the, you know, who maybe has the the graded stuff on the low end, um, things like that. Do kind of a preliminary walk around. Now, will you miss a deal because of that? Yeah, maybe, but more times than not, you're going to save yourself some money. Because if you are the type that wants to buy a sealed product, you go up to one guy's table and he has like, uh, I was showing you in the, in the uh, uh, footage, you know, the one guy had hoops packs for $34. Um, you know, and if I would have paid $34 to get one hoops pack and then four or five tables down the road, there's a guy selling hoops packs for $20, I would have kind of really been angry at myself. So try to do kind of a preliminary walk around, you know, ask, Hey, you know, Hey, you know, what are you looking for that? Or how much you got on that or something like that. Um, I tend not to, to, to buy anything within like the first 30 minutes to an hour that I'm there. I usually kind of use that time to kind of see what's going on at the show see who's got the hot table who's you know which table has all you know all the people around it uh, and things like that and you know again kind of just kind of get your bearings as well you know although also too if you're you know the type that likes to know your exits or where the restroom is or something like that kind of helps with that as well one of the last tips i'll talk about and it should be kind of common sense but um i, I will just kind of spend a few minutes talking about it the main thing and if you're in this hobby, you know that um, there are a lot of people in this hobby. Be nice. Being nice to other people, whether it's the vendor, other people there, whoever it is, you know, will get you a lot farther in this hobby than it is to, you know, not be nice. We'll say, I'll say it that way. Um, because if you are a jerk to the vendor at this show, a lot of the vendors, they travel on. You might see them in two shows later. And they might actually have something that you really, really want. And what will happen is they'll remember you from two shows ago and how you were a jerk to them or something like that. And they may not, you know, they not may not play ball with you. So if you're trying to buy a card and, and you don't like their price, just something as simple as, man, it's a little more than I wanted to spend. Uh, this is how much I want. And if you guys can't come to a deal, you know, just kind of, you know, hand the card back, say thank you very much and walk on. I mean, to me, I, I see it sometimes that people stand there and they and they tell the to the guy that he's crazy for those prices or, you know, this that and the other and they you know you know almost I won't say get into a shouting match but they just you know it, to me there's nothing positive that comes from that to not being nice because 
you know, like I said, a couple shows later, you might see that same vendor and he might have something you want. And, you know, he remember, he, they may remember you from a couple shows ago. And so just kind of be nice. Being nice in this hobby has got me a long way um, and it will get you a long way as well. Like I showed you already, you know, the uh, I went to this show with Blaine Sports Cards and, you know, he found two cards that he thought I would be interested in and he bought them and he gave them to me. I didn't have to buy them from him, didn't have to give him any money or anything like that because I have given him cards in the past as well. Just, again, just give it to him because I know what he likes. I know what he's looking for. I know who he PCs. So the main thing is just be nice to the people at the show. Uh, you know, the vendor, other people there, uh, or something like, you know, wh whatever it is. Just, you know, you know, be a good person within this hobby. Um, you know, this hobby is full of great people. It's full of, it's also has some people who are not so great. So just don't, uh, you know, don't be one of those people. Be Again, this is just my experience. Some tips that I wanted to throw out to you to kind of tell you how I approach a uh, sports card show. Um, maybe you can learn something from it. Maybe you can take some information from it um, and use it at a sports car show that you go to. So if you could help me out, hit that thumbs up button down there. If you're not subscribed, uh, please, uh, I would ask you to please subscribe and uh, follow me for more content like this. I um, also do pack and uh, box openings, things like that. Do an auction every Sunday at 4 p.m. with Nate up there at Everyday I'm Hustling, as well as Anthony at Pittsburgh. Uh, every uh, Sunday at 4 p.m., uh, we do an auction between the two of their channels. Hopefully soon we'll rotate into my channel as well. And with that, like I always say, be safe and have a good day.